Today we're going to install some shed doors on this rolling tool supply trailer. The height of the door is already determined. When I did the siding, I cut an eight foot sheet in half, so it's four feet top to bottom. We'll measure the door opening. Eighty-four inches, half of that's forty-two. Here's the door face. I believe it'd be easier to cut from the other side. Because if I cut from this side, it will rip through, make it rough. Plus, I'll be able to see the lines better. 42. You can have a little imperfection on this side because you're going to use a piece of factory trim to straighten everything up. This LP smart side it has a tongue here. One is protruded and one is inward. So I'm going to use that to be the stopper for the other door. No air gap. I'll drop that down a bit. Got a big gap. Uh-oh. It's going to be a problem. So I'll do a dry fit. Here's that tongue. Same way when you're installing the siding. So that doesn't look too bad. Now I could cut it two different measurements first, see how it looks, and then trim it because I don't want to go too short. Here's the issue, which is severe. This large gap, this looks good from here to here, looks good on the bottom. So I gotta improvise somehow. Not sure. What's creating this issue is there's a bow in the trailer. It's not true. I'm thinking about taking off this amount down there to make this come together, but I don't know how that will affect the door opening. If it opens funky, but closes nicely, I'm all right with that. If I put a filler in here, wood filler, that might work. But no matter what I do, it's going to look funky. Well, I'm just looking for functionality when the doors are closed, the lines are straight. And it'll never be straight here where the hump is. There ain't much I can do about it. It's a rolling trailer. There is room for filler here. I don't know which route to take. From here to zero. That looks doable. Doesn't look too bad. See how it goes. Looks all right. 44 inches. 44 and a half. So this whole door system is going to be improvised. So if the door flipped upside down, this is the bottom. I'm going 44 and 43 and a half. Well, it's a little wide here and then it narrows down. Maybe that's a good thing. When the doors settle, that will fill in. But there's the overlap right there. Tight at the top. Nice gap there, so I might trim that a bit. Oh, donkey! Yeah! You gonna help me fix the doors? You gonna help me work on the doors? 
doggy video. Here's the trim to cover this gap. Tucks up underneath here so the rain goes on to it and then down. And it's going to continue on through the doors. So it's going to go on about like that. And it's it again, it's going to be funky because it's going to be split right here when it lands on the doors and solid from here back. So it appears like it has trim on both sides so I might do the trim and hinges first because it's just too confusing to figure out on the sawhorses so it'll look like that only it'd be cut right on the door line it'll look like trim up top and bottom I'd hate to rip the board if I could find a piece just the right width perhaps I'll do that Got some OSI construction adhesive with a seal that crack and hold the trim in place. Couple finish nails. Oh, put a little dent in it. Here's the trim I'll be using for the doors. One by four. Here's the paint I'm using for the trim, Rust-Oleum, Ultra Cover, Satin. I stand them upright and then clamp it to paint the edge. Roller makes it quick. A lot of times you get runs if you do the edge last. And of course, at the end of the project, I'll do touch-up. I do both sides for weather protection. Forty-seven. This is the hinge side, so I'm going to glue everything nice and strong. So I'm not going level. I'm following the trailer contours because everything's bowed. Looks like this needs to be moved over. This board here overlaps a little bit. Perhaps that's a good thing. I put the trim on, close that air gap, and then the hinge Should hinge right around it like that this board will be a little bit longer since this is catching the gap here I got to match the top here and then I'll have another board going this way that's how it'll look so I've switched over to tight bond heavy-duty construction adhesive this stuff has amazing gripping power You don't need as much at the bottom. Right here it's critical where the hinge is, all the weights on the door. So I'm gonna use this trim as my guide. Flush with the top here, and just a little gap for expansion. You wanna get some screws that will not penetrate through the front. These are a tad too long. It just pierces. And then when you tighten it, you're gonna have a sharp edge. So I need a shorter screw. So I'm just gonna put them in here now. Just attack it and get shorter screws later.
So I'll flip this over. Got me some one inch drywall screws. So I've got this hinge set from Amazon. This is enough to do two doors. Got your latch, set of keys, locks for both doors on the bottom, some screws. So I'll install my first hinge. Line right up on that crack. Pre-drill hole so it doesn't crack out. And if you're on the bench, which I might do here. I think a good rule of thumb is to put it in there like that. Put your screws in and then I'll flip it out. The screws that come with the package are not long enough and they're not coarse. And on this side, I can go through this and straight into the stud. So I'm using a long drywall screw. I'll be changing these screws out later because they'll rust and run down your siding. I'm just using it now temporarily. I measured down two feet, center. Now I don't know if this will help or not, but it might. Very nice. I gotta get the center piece in. Very nice. It doesn't creak. It's real lightweight, but I gotta reinforce it. And see, I don't care about how it opens, right. how level it is, it's shutting. This here. Is what I did. I don't know if that matters, but that line my hinges up. Right. Because I think if they're funky, it will open funky. What's this one for? Oh, that's for the next door. I got another door to do. I wanted that one in place so I can mold that one to it, you know, the best I can. But this I don't like here, Rick. I could have been better here. That's a hell a heart. That's a big gap. Mm. But I could do something from the insider. Because I'm trying, I didn't want this thing to be way up here. It's just. I like it. Me too. It's a shed on wheels. Yeah. Here's the screws that come with the hinge set. They're not very beefy and they're fine thread. So, I've got some exterior deck screws so they don't rust. And then I'm just going to hit them with paint to match the hinge. So, I've got the spring loaded door latch. And you just want to push it up a little bit where you'd like it to be. Put it back there and mark it. And then we'll draw a hole. One inch drywall screws. Close your door. Pull the pin down. And then draw around it. Let me show a better way. Get some chalk from a chalk line. Chalk that up. Pull the pin. Close tight. There's your center hole. Thank you. You can measure the diameter or go to your drill set 
and see which one this drops in the hole to get your size for the bit. I drilled a hole in a piece of scrap and I'm using the other latch for the bottom. Fits nice and snug. That'll work. Well, this is kind of a one-time shot. Because if you're too far out, your door's always going to be loose. Do the same to the bottom. Now we'll do the door handle. Consist of a rod, strikers, <clears throat> and you got this Allen wrench that you use to tighten against this rod after it's in. The screws they supply is a bit long for me. I found a little Allen in the key set. And that's for this one right here. This nuggie goes in there. <clears throat> and then you tighten this little Allen screw. So, I want to be center here so it looks nice. And you want enough overhang to catch this other door, which there's a little lip in there, it's going to catch it. Perfect, and it's the same size bit as the latch. So everyone's application is going to be different. I got an inch and a quarter screw, and I'm just gauging it to make sure it doesn't pierce through this side. So there's where I want it. So, it's either unlocked that way or that way. You can do it either way, I'm sure. So this slides on the shaft. You gotta determine where do you want closed, there or here. I'd like it this way. And then you just close it. Now let me snug that Allen up. And then we'll check it. Okay, that's loose. Try it all the way in. Whoa, that's nice and tight. We'll loosen it up just a little bit. Perfect. They give you plenty of keys. So now I'm looking for some stability in these doors. And I'm gonna install some trim, one by four, right here. Make a square box. Make these doors rigid. So the one by four we're gonna put across here, we want to clear the deck. So you can measure down or use a square. We wanna go past that, so it comes in about this area. And I'll tell you what, I'm just going to use an even number, five. This has nothing to do with level, it has to do with distance. Then measure from line to line. So I'm going to leave plenty of room for the latches. Now I'll show you an easy way to line up the screws, since that's pretty thin. Mark that. Same at the bottom. Put a screw in top and bottom, but not all the way in. Just so it pierces through the other side. I put a screw here and here, because this is raised up. Then I just put my chalk line on there. Go right to that screw. That's your screw line, top to bottom. 
Here's the screw protruding through all the way down. There's the other screw. So I've backed off the screws, they're still in. A little bit of glue helps hold things. Line it up on the line. The hard part is getting your first screw in on the back side. Noise! I don't have a clamp that will reach in that far, but that worked nice. I mean, you can see right through the crack, the screw, the lining up. Nice. Now, just put a few more screws in, do the bottom and all the way around. So I found an easier way. I came over the same as that, put a screw through, which marks the hole on that side. Screw on the bottom, chalk line. Now I'll put a few screws through here to mark the other side. Clears the drawers. So that stiffens the door up. And to make it super rigid, put some shelves in. Rattle cans, engine starting fluid. You get to develop this area to your taste. I didn't use two by threes because I wanted to keep it lightweight. And I just realized when I do the other door, I'm gonna build the box first, then put it on the wall, right? I'd like to thank everyone for watching, hope this has helped someone, and in the next video I'll do the set of doors in the back, and then I'll do the final tour, I'll provide a link, right here, over there.